بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا حبيب الله رب العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد وعليه التيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين سيما بقية الله الأعزم بقية الله خير لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين ولعنة الدائم على أدائهم مجمعين من ألان الأقيام يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأسد الله أيامكم Greetings and felicitations to all our viewers and welcome to our special set of programs that will be focusing upon Imam Al-Asr alayhi salam. May Allah haste his reappearance and include us all as his faithful companions. I congratulate you and we all congratulate to Ahl Bayt, to the Imam of our time, upon the birth of our 12th Imam. Indeed, uh, the birth of the Imam involves many realities within. For example, the whole concept of Hidayat and guidance really sits upon this great wujud, upon this great man, upon this great Imam of ours. Something that is, have never seen, the earth have never seen, the heavens have never seen, is going to take place through this Imam. Not any prophet have ever managed to pull through what he is going to establish and he will be doing that. So therefore it requires a lot of angles of discussion prior to discussing about the birth of the Imam himself. Going back in terms of uh, you know the realities that they have taken place before his birth for example the whole concept of the Messiah itself, the reality of Messiah within world religions, within Islam as well, and the way how Tashayyu focuses to this phenomenon of, 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 of Messiah as well. In order to really discuss this, uh, you know, blessed uh, discussion of the 12th Imam, the birth of the Savior, the day of the birth of the Savior, uh, we have with us uh, Hujjatul Islam wal Muslimin, uh, Shaykh Ayyub Rashid. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykhuna. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And mubarak to you as well. Thank you very much, and mubarak to you too, my Thank dear Shaykh. Very much. It's lovely to be with you again, once again. Ahsan. And lovely to be on Safir with our viewers. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the efforts of all the mu'mineen and mu'minat, those Ilahi. who are working here voluntarily. Ilahi those who are participating and yourself as well, inshallah. Ilahi, I mean, and you too, inshallah. Uh, Shaykh Al Aziz, as we uh, look into the birth of the Imam, uh, I think it's uh, personally think it's important to look at the phenomena of the Messiah itself, mm. because this phenomena sits in, or is the essential reality of all faiths. Yes, indeed. Uh, Alhamdulillah, the way you have uh, started the program is very important that we know that uh, the birth of Imam al-Mahdi Ajalallahu Farajahu Sharif is uh, a sign of a new beginning. And this beginning has been mentioned not, not only by the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, but even before him other messengers were talking about the time when Imam would come, when will come, Imam Alayhi Salam will bring a new uh, phase of the life which human beings have never seen it. So when we talk about the concept of Messiah, we find that him being a savior, all the mankinds around the world uh, in different phases of uh, the human lives in this world, people are talking about Messiah who will come to save them from problems, injustices, calamities, uh, thulm, oppressions by the rulers of their times. So when we talk about uh, Imam Mahdi, according to Islamic understanding, of course we know him as Al-Mahdi. And he is Al-Mahdi because why? He will bring the guidance and he will make to lead people to Sirat al-Mustaqim properly. And when we look at this concept, we find that when people face oppressions, Normally, they look up to the sky in court to say, when will come the Nasr? Mata Nasrullah, for example. When will the victory come? So, when we look at Islamic understanding, we, we know that the Holy Prophet Muhammad came 
he propagated Islam, other Imams came. Now is the time when people, when we look around, we see the wars which are happening, the killings which are happening, and even sometimes when Muslims are killing one another to, le to the level that a Muslim is thinking, where we, we, will the peace come? And will there someone who will come to help us? So this concept of Messiah, we see it in our daily lives. So the birth of Imam Mahdi, alayhi salam, it is that beginning which says, yes, Messiah has been born. And of course, he will come to fill this world with peace and justice and equity. And people will live a life which will be a blessed life at his time. So when we look at this concept, we see that now it is the time Every, every human being you talk to him, he may say that, yes, indeed, we are waiting for him to reappear. Right. Uh, two things which I think it's quite important to uh, look at it here. Uh, in every era, there has been sort of a savior for different groups of peoples, uh, you know, different communities, for example. Like as you were mentioning that the yearning for the savior to really protect them, to guide them, to lead them. Every community have that within. It is in that very fitra and nature. Mm. And God has promised to you know, save uh, people from the hands of the oppressors and to send guidance, have sent his messengers in different parts of the world. And many a times it happened be so that some communities were guided by with some messengers that they are unaware of another community that even existing mm -hmm. right 124,000 as we know that they were prophets for example yeah. right but now the there is a universal demand the whole world have become one community now mm -hmm. everybody is aware of each other you know and the desire and the yearning for a messiah is universal as well sure. right so this also points out in that very direction that, you know, instead of having many small, small messiahs being sent or saviors being sent to different communities, now is the time to send the one and only one mm -hmm. who will unite all the faiths and who is the desire of all the oppressed ones mm -hmm. to take care of all the injustices that are taking place, not only in one village mm. or in one country or one part of the land, but universally. Indeed. So th th that's where the world have reached now. That's number one. Number two, uh, it is quite important as well uh, to really uh, look at the concept of hope because Imam is the provider of that hope mm -hmm. and he is the source of the hope right for all mankind you know and 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 there is because hope is the vehicle by which human beings carry on their daily life and their daily activity they have some hope because of that they carry on. Yeah, yeah. And Imam Mahdi alayhi salam is the hope of all. Indeed. Right. Indeed. I will add one more thing here, and that is as we are looking at the times before the Imam, from that from that from the point of view of the concept as the Messiah, from the point of view of the savior of mankind. Now when we look at the present situation of the world, we tend to see that there is a pattern for the savior to come. Mm. You know, always there's a pattern in history as well. The, you know, people of Moses, the Bani Israel were persecuted. There was a pattern. Mm. The young children being slain and killed just before the birth of Musa alayhi salam. Mm. Because mm. Pharaoh knew and he was carrying out this sort of mass killing, sure. right? Time of the prophet, the young girls were being burned. Were, were buried alive, mm. young children. And we see the pattern that when it comes to zulm, it begins with those who are innocent, meaning that those who are children. Then it reaches to women. The woman. Yeah. Then it is umum. At the time of Musa, salam, the young babies were killed. Sure. 
At the time of Prophet, young girls were being were buried. buried alive. At the time of Musa alayhi salam, the value of women, for example, or at the time of Prophet, women have no value as such. They were in darkness, in all over. I mean, Islam and Quran talks about the right of inheritance 1,400 years ago. Mm. The British law recently is talking about right of inheritance for women. Mm -hmm. So it was Islam who brought, you know, who got rid of the oppression that Indeed. was taking place. Mm -hmm. So there's always this pattern of oppression. And the pattern of oppression begins with the most mazloom of all, the children. And women and the society in general and deen. Yeah. You know, the deen is not respected. So what we are seeing today is look how many children are being massacred. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. How many children are being killed, mm. right? Physically as well, mentally as well. Sure, sure. You know, the, you know, the children ha have become vegetables in terms of their intellectual capacity by being glued to the television from morning till night, playing with Xbox, play, watching television shows. They just woke up in the morning, you know, like a sheep, they go to the school mm -hmm. and they are fed in terms of the you know the atheist type of you know mm. be, be, belief or you know pattern of teaching which is based on darwinism mm. Mm. they become the product by the time they graduate from high school a darwinist in terms of their mental capacity sure because the whole syllabus is based around that mm. right yeah. so this is actually you know, we are in a way spiritually, you know, getting, killing their, sure. their capacity, their intellectual capacity, mm. their spiritual capacity. So there's this pattern before the Messiah comes that, you know, the lack of spirituality, the lack of haya, yeah. the community have reached to a point there is no haya, there is no moral, there is no ethics and akhlaq, right? Those people who are considered to be thief and robbers and most immoral, they are appreciated. They are considered as role models, they the are celebrity the leaders, culture. Leaders the they are the leaders, right? Mm. So this pattern is in the time of Pharaoh, mm. at the time of Yusuf, uh, at the time of, you know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at the time of other prophets as well. We see the same, you know, pattern. thing pattern. So yeah. now it's reaching to that point. Sure. Yeah, this point is very important. I see what you say for example recently many people have started talking about the 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 world body which is there to bring justice for human beings and that is united nations they are talking about united nations is like a dog without teeth it it can't do anything when we look around we see the killings we see the injustices and the United Nations is passing resolutions after resolutions and people don't want even to act according to those resolutions. So the way you said is true. Now it's a universal awakening where people are asking, where is the one who will come to help and save us? And that's why when we talk about the concept of Savior and Messiah, we see that it's the whole world now. It used to be one particular area of the world but now everyone is looking for that particular moment. And that's why as Muslims, when we celebrate the 15th of Sha'ban, the birth of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, we said, Alhamdulillah, the Savior has been born. He is in occultation. He will come and he will fulfill the mission of all the messengers. And that is to, ful to fill this world with justice and uh, peace. And it's true, what you have said, for example, in the Holy Quran, we see in Surah Al-Qasas, which is Surah number 28 in the Holy Quran. Ayah number 4 and number 5, they portray this image. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna Fir'auna ala fil ard. Fir'aun exalted in the land. Wa ja'ala ahlaha shia'a. He divided his people into many groups and sects and levels and ranks. The one part he makes them as inferior. They don't have any rights. He slaughters their children, their boys. And he leaves the baby girls to continue with their lives. 
until the following ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wanurid that idea of uh, practicing injustice then we will change it how wanuridu annamunna ala alladhina stud'ifu fil ard wa naj'alahum a'imma wa naj'alahum alwarithin so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we have uh, 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 decided decree that those who were deprived on the land we will make them the leaders and not only that we will make them the inheritors of this earth wa laqad katabna fi zabur in another ayah in the holy quran an al ard yarithuha ibadi salihun this land this earth this dunya this world will be inherited by righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the concept of messiah is very important for us to talk about it and that's why we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sending uh, Imam al-Mahdi al-Qa'im in order for him to come and fulfill the world and to fill the world with peace and justice right. so yes we, you are right about that particular point right, right. now obviously we have to have as this is a very uh, supernatural and spiritual reality now this needs this reality needs to be uh, you know uh, when it descends from the heaven it has to take a form right mm. somehow it has to happen Indeed. through someone mm. you know there has to be a sort of like a medium and a vehicle right you know just as how we read in the quran that you know jibrail came from the heaven but it took a form of a bashar for hazrat maryam mm. you know to read when it comes to this dunya it has uh, yeah so the same way you know we see that just like how there is nuzul of quran on the on the uh, shab qadr on the night of qadr on right the same way there is this nuzul of natiq quran mm -hmm. you know on the 15th mm -hmm. you know the birth of our imam uh, which takes place on the 15th of shaban Indeed. there are proofs of his birth you know uh, people have seen for example people have recorded um, although uh, because of the intense pressure that was there mm. from the khulafa mm. because it was well known that the prophet have said there will be 12 khalifas after me yeah now as we look at the history when it comes to when it when the time comes closer to the 12th imam we find there is extraordinary pressure and zulm upon the imams and also upon the followers of the imam right indeed, indeed. and uh, for example if you look at from the time of the 8th imam onwards all of the imams were shaheed in a very young age mm -hmm. this points out to that pressure which is upon the imams right and god have his, has his own way of preparing you know the community you know to really accept the fact of an imam to be young and to accept the fact of even if the imam is behind the veil is in ghaiba is in occultation still the community will be able to function mm. in the direction which is given by the imams the Indeed. hidayat Indeed. So Imam Jawad salam, at the age of six or seven, he becomes the Imam. Mm. So this points out to that, how can that be possible? So we say that Imamat is a divine affair. You know, God is the one who appoints an Imam, Indeed. right? Indeed. right? God is, chooses and makes that Imam. Mm -hmm. So now this Imam Jawad at that seven years proves that yes, he is the most knowledgeable. He is. He could He's be, and the, and the Shias follow an Imam who is just seven years old, mm. and this is a divine affair. So Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, if he becomes an Imam at the age of young age, would say, well, the community is already prepared and accepted. Yes, Indeed. why not be the case? Indeed, right. Indeed. So we see that God also prepared the Ummah for the acceptance of the Imamat, the concept of Imamat, the reality of Imamat. And the reality of Imamat being something that is divinely appointed. Inni ja'iluka fil arde khalifa. Right. Mm. Right. Allah decided that He wants to, mm. you know, appoint a khalifa mm. on this earth. It's Allah. Mm. And then Hazrat Ibrahim says that, you know, 
ومن ذريته ان ابراهيم سيز واي نوت مي فور اكزامبل بيكوز هي واز ميد از امام رايت اني جاعلك للناس اماما اني جاعلك للناس اماما يو نو حضرت ابراهيم عليه السلام واز بروفيت واز رسول اند ذن ذا درجه اوف امامات ناو يو هاف باس ذا ساك تيست امتحان اند ناو اي ديسايد ذات اي وود لايك تو ميك يو ان امام سو ذات امامات ذات رياليتي اوف امامات از ماتش هاير Indeed. And God is the one who appoints. Indeed. And uh, the way you have said is true that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way in uh, philosophy, logic, mantic, we understand in aqaid discussions that he is musabib al-asbab. He is the cause of all the causes. And nothing can happen without a cause. So there is a cause and effect. So in order for Imam Mahdi alayhi salam to come as a savior as we have seen of course as a human being he had to have a father uh, and also a mother in order for him to come into this existence and uh, looking at one particular point to connect to what you say we see that all muslims now if we talk about muslims all muslims whether they are shias or they are sunni they have this belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a person as a savior and he will be known as al-mahdi and he will come to save the mankind so this general understanding that mahdi will come it is with all muslims now we have only one issue and that is for shias they say he was born on the 15th of shaaban year 255 of hijra For Sunnis, they say, most of them, most of the Sunni, they say, he will be born. My minority among the Sunnis, they agree that Imam Mahdi has been born. So now when we look at this, firstly, we see that all Muslims today, when you say Imam al-Mahdi, they understand that this is a savior who will come to save the mankind. And according to Ahlul Sunnah, for example, they say, if, even if, between what will be there and the time of qiyamah even if it will be like seven days or one day allah will prolong that day in order for him so to send to send a savior and that is al-mahdi so when we look at muslims we understand that there is no any difference about the person there is difference about whether he is born or not but for shias being the followers of ahlul bayt alayhi wasalam And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says clearly, إِنِّي تَارِكُنْ فِيكُمُ الثَّقَلَيْنِ I live amongst you two precious things. كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَعِتْرَةِ أَعْلَى بَيْتِ The first one is the book of Allah. The second one is my holy household. When we ask the household of Rasulullah, they tell us that Imam Mahdi was born on the 15th of Shaaban. year 255 now there will be another question how can someone been born at that particular year and he's alive up to today so this is another discussion but we celebrate the wilada because we believe he was born his father was known as hasan al askari imam alayhi salam the mother nargis katun or sausan or other names which are there but the maria for example yeah. and other names so the father and the mother are known yeah. and the father and the mother they say we have a, a baby boy by the name muhammad al mahdi yes. how can people now reject about right. that so here again we find another hadith from a shia uh, school of thought they say that the holy prophet says that uh, al mahdi min wuldi fatima mahdi will be from the descendants of fatima his name will be my my name so i am muhammad and he will also be known as muhammad ahlu sunna they have another narration which says his name will be like my name and the name of his father will be like my my father's name it means that according to them he will be known as muhammad bin abdullah but when we ask ahlul bayt alayhi wasalam they say no his name is muhammad ibn hasan al askari so imam al mahdi alayhi salam so when we look at the major issues we see muslims are together it is the minor issues which uh, we need to talk about and 
we find that the mother has been mentioned and the father has been mentioned, people need to go and look at the historical facts in order for them to know this particular point. Sure. And also, you know, uh, just I'll quick briefly mention in the margin and then we'll look at the historical sort of mm. events that unfolded for the birth of the Imam to take place, that how the mother you know, migrated from, from Rome or mm. Byzantine, yeah. which was the part of the Roman Empire at that time and who she was and what sure. happened. See, I mean, in terms of the spiritual reality, metaphysical reality, it is very much required that there be a representative of God on earth. Yeah. You know, there has to be someone here for the existence to really continue. You know, as we say, he's the hujjat, mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. the proof of God. And that proof of God is very much required to be here. Indeed. Because there are many Quranic realities, Quranic concepts that will not be fulfilled without hujjat being there. For example, Tanazzalu al malaikatu wa the light of Qadr. You know, in the Tanazzalu al malaikatu wa yeah, mm. where is these malaika gonna descend? Mm -hmm. To whose heart these malaika gonna descend? Mm. With the destiny of the man, because you know the 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 there should be some sort of sinqiya, some sort of compatibility, commonality. Mm. You know, if you want to land a, a plane, you have to have a runway. Indeed, you cannot ra land it on you know, you know, in a grass Rough field. Road, yeah. yeah, you have to have that runway that have that you know so the malaike who are of pure be material pure substance right they need to descend where onto a heart which is pure indeed right Masha. right that requires that sort of some compatibility and through him through mm. this where it has descend from the heaven mm. you know as they say that everything have a nuzul from the heaven, even the angels, even the water that comes is brought by an angel. Every drop of water, an angel. Fal mudabberate amra. amra. The angels are designated to carry out the command of God. Everything that comes from the heaven that takes the physical form is a risk, is a material reality, risk is. But this risk takes a physical form, right? Ilm, the same way, it takes some sort of you know, intellectual exercise and understanding that heart comes about is that immaterial reality on that metaphysical. Now from there, it needs to come to this earth. The risk needs to come. The malaike is descending. The f destiny of the whole existence is being, you know, sent. Mm. That is through that heart. Indeed. That medium is Imam al-Asr alayhi salam. Salam Allah right? It just can't be without it. It doesn't really make sense. It's like saying, you know, somebody comes and say, is it day today? You'll say, no, it's not day today. But the sun have risen. Mm. It's still not day. You know, no, the sun have risen means the day have arrived. Yes, the sun might be behind the clouds. Yes, there may, could be an eclipse. But we still say that it sun. is the next day. It is the day, mm. right? Mm -hmm. The sun is hiding, but the day have arrived means the, the, the benefit and the, you know, is the next day. Sure. Right? The same way. If those risk and baraka and blessings, malaika, they need to descend, it has to be that sort of runway or that medium, which is the Imam al-Asr alayhi salam. MashaAllah. Right. It's, yeah. it's a nice point. And unfortunately, some people, maybe they don't look at it that way. Uh, many people read Quran, but they don't reflect. So many read, but few reflect. And uh, you can see that Surah Al-Qadr is very clear. The way you have said, Tanazzalu al-Malaika. Tanazzalu is filul mudari, a present continuous tense. Tanazzalu. Allah didn't say nazalat. They have descended and gone. Tanazzalu. It's a continuous act which happens on every Laylatul Qadr every year. So we know, and the point is very clear that if this earth wouldn't have a hujjah, the earth would be destroyed. So the hujjah is there, and for us we know that it is Imam al-Mahdi, salamullahi alayhi. 
And another thing which is very important before maybe we mention about uh, the birth of Imam and the father and the mother in detail, we come to, to learn that according to the Holy Quran, Surah al kawthar where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Inna a'atoynaka al kawthar Fasalli li rabbika wanhar, Inna shani'aka huwa al abtar. Indeed, we have given you kawthar. Pray to your Lord and give sacrifice. Indeed, your enemy is the one who is without posterity. So now here we come to the question. We celebrate the wilad of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam on the 15th of Sha'ban. We say he has been born according to Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Some other people come and say, no, he's not born. And uh, we don't know when will he be born. Allah in the Holy Quran says to the Holy Prophet, your genealogy, your descendants will continue. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. So the family of the Holy Prophet will continue. If we say Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, we don't know whether he's born and who uh, will be the mother, we don't know. While the Holy Quran is very clear, Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. The family of the Holy Prophet will continue. Imam Mahdi comes from the family of the Holy Prophet. Imam Mahdi is one of the children of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. And that's why Ahlul Bayt, they say, we celebrate this particular event because why? We celebrate the wilada of the one who will come to save the mankind. So it's a big day. And if it is a big day, the father of Imam Mahdi is a big personality. The mother of Imam Mahdi is a big personality. And we can see that history has recorded uh, historical events and accounts which each and every human being needs to think about that. Especially when we look at the time before Imam was born. The rulers of Bani Abbas who were there from the time of Al-Mutawakkil al-Abbasi who was a man of uh, rage. He wanted to finish the family of the Holy Prophet. Can you imagine? And Someone considered as the Khalifa of Muslim. Khalifa of Muslim is yes. after the Ashraf, Sayyids. He wants to finish the family of Rasulullah. How can he be Khalifa of Muslims? Al-Mutawakkil al-Abbas. And then came Al-Mu'tamid. These two, and of course those who were before him, they knew Imam Mahdi would come. And they wanted to get rid of him by what? By making sure they jail and they prison the father, separate him from the mother, so Imam Mahdi wouldn't be born. So in the beginning you mentioned something which is very important, and that is history repeats itself. The way atrocities were committed at the time of Nabiullah Musa alayhi salam, and Fir'aun thought, Fir'aun thought that Musa wouldn't be born, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did whatever he planned. Innama amruhu. إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ It happened that Musa was born even though Firaun didn't like that to happen. And at the time of Al-Mu'tamid, he didn't want Imam Mahdi alayhi salam to be born. Lakin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had his own plan. And you could see that Imam Mahdi was born even though the plan was to stop this family not to have any child. Yeah, sure. And in regards to, obviously as you were mentioning that, the parents are very important, mm. right? Uh, obvi the Imam, and we see, uh, we see that the mothers of the Imams, whether that be the Imam Al Asr alayhi salam, mm. and the mothers of all the Imams, they were very pious, very pure, uh, very you know sort of uh, you know uh, true to to in their fitra in their nature, and that's why they were given the honor to become the mother of the Imams. In the case of uh, the twelfth Imam, Imam Al Asr alayhi salam, there is a narration which uh, Ibn Babway mm. emphasizes, and other scholars also have uh, basically uh, recorded this narration. Um, some in a more of a hagiographic uh, style. Mm -hmm. uh, some have accepted the fact that there is something of this accord uh, that. The mother, who was known as the Narjis, apparently to be the uh, the, the daughter of the one of the chieftains yeah. of Byzantine of the Roman Empire, uh, and the lineage that they talk about 
is from uh, the apostle of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, mm. who was known as Simon, or if you want to call Peter, for example, mm -hmm. who was Shaheed. You know, he was martyred in Rome and, you know, the St. Peter's Church, for example, mm. that we have in Rome. Mm. Uh, so, so there are different accounts which are like puzzle. Obviously, history is like that. We've got to put in and have put a broad, puzzle, yeah, puzzle together. together and have a broader picture. Mm. And it could make sense. It, you know, it, you know, we could kind of understand uh, there is something there. Yeah. You know? So obviously, with the apostle of, you know, of, of, of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, the connection, you know, of this mother who was a Christian actually, mm. and she sees Hazrat Maryam in her dream, and, in her dream, and Hazrat Fatima to Zahra salam alayha, alayha. and she accepts Islam. And apparently, the chieftain, the ma father, was trying to uh, engage her or was trying to perform the marriage of her over and over again for many times and somehow this marriage was 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 uh, wo didn't carry out either mm. the roof fell down some event happened which did not really allow and uh, you know there are reports of 14 dreams mm. that she saw and there are reports of where how she should uh, camouflage herself or how she should in a way uh, portray herself as a as a slave girl and be s travel to uh, to uh, Iraq uh, to Arabia yeah mm. and then Imam Hassan Askari alay, Imam Hadi alayhi salam basically because slave trade trade was there at that time mm -hmm. Imam Hadi alayhi salam purchases relieves her frees her and give Narjis Khatun or this lady Narjis in the marriage of Imam Hassan Askar. Mm, mm. Yeah, this story uh, is it's an interesting story, the way you have mentioned it according to Ibn Babawai. And uh, the, the thing is, it's, it's a detail. There's a, a, a lot of details there, which when we look at them, then you come and to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed he planned for Imam Mahdi alayhi salam to be born. So number one, this uh, uh, lady Narjis Katun, salamullahi alayha, uh, who saw 14 times, the same dream 14 times. She sees Fatima to Zahra. She sees Mary, mother of Jesus. 14 times is, is no joke. It means that there is a message here. Until then she sees clearly that I have been told to go to this particular area. I will be taken as captive and someone will come with exact amount of money, 220 dinar, and he will speak in my language, and I will communicate, and I will see the letter which has been written, and I will accept that letter. So when it happened, after the fight happened uh, between Muslims of that time and this particular area of Roman Empire, which we call it maybe today Sham, when it happened, and the lady Nargis Khatun was taken as captive. And in the souk of Baghdad, the seller of those slaves, unfortunately, people were sold like slaves. His name was Amr. And Amr wanted to sell this lady. But Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam has given a letter to a person by the name Bashir al Bishr bin Suleiman with 220 dinars and a letter. Said, go to Baghdad you will see someone by the name Amr who is selling this particular lady, you go and buy. She will refuse all the people, but you will be able to buy. And, and uh, Bishr goes there, and indeed he speaks in the language of Lady Nargis Khatun, and Nargis understands what he says, and uh, it is here Nargis says, okay, I will go with this particular individual, Bishr bin Suleiman, and the price was 220 dinar. So when you look at these details, you come to wonder what kind of a bujiza was this? And Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam said, she will accept to be bought by you. And when Lady Nargis Khatun saw the letter from Imam al-Hadi, she kisses the letter, she cries to say, this is exactly the dream I saw. So if we can talk here about a lessons of some uh, reflections is that number one, 
Spiritualism is not only with Muslims. Spiritualism can be with even non-Muslims. There are many pure people who are not Muslims, but because of purity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may guide them. But however, we know that according to us, Islam is the final religion and people need to become Muslims in order for them to be saved. But it's you, me and others we need to do tabligh to people in order for them to follow the right uh, religion. So according to this now story, we see that this lady in Argis Khatun, when she was a Christian, that purity, maybe because of genealogy and upbringing, you could see that she could see the dreams which eventually became true. And when Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam was, uh, he, he received this lady, he said, now this lady need to be uh, uh, for my son, Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam, and then Imam Hassan al-Askari married, and then you can see the mother and the father being pure people, and the son, you can imagine, is Imam of our time, al hujja ibn al-Hassan al-Mahdi, ajjal Allahu farajahu sharif Inshallah, inshallah. Indeed, Naam. indeed. It's a very fascinating. And the thing that I was mentioning earlier, that we see the period of the last Imams, from Imam Jawad alayhi salam onwards, mm. we see a lot of miraculous or karamat of the Imams, mm. because the restriction from the Khulafa was so powerful that they have to you know, really use some of their karamat. Mm, mm, mm. Because we know that imams, uh, they would not prefer to exhibit, use supernatural powers. Indeed. You know, Imam Hussein, as we know, the whole battle of Karbala, if he would have wanted, you mm. know, he could have, you know, Jafar Jinn, the chief tent of Jinn, a Jinnah came and he said, I'm ready to help you. He said, no, you know, naturally, right? This is so the imams, battle. yeah. Yeah, they always stick to the haqqaiq, to the truth, to real. Ibn Muljim comes, he says, yeah, he will be my mm. killer, Imam mm -hmm. Ali says, right? Mm -hmm. But always the, 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 the fitra, you know, fitra that, that Allah have designated, they follow that. But we do find that from the time of the eighth Imam onwards, because the intensity of oppression was so much that Imam have exhibited law of karamat, mm. you know. Like for example, he would say that what you have brought in terms of homes, or in terms of mm. donation, who gave it to you, you know, they will really show that to mm -hmm. prove their imamat. You know, there are many stories or many incidents or narrations being reported. You know, like for example, when Imam uh, Al Hadi Alayhi Salam was uh, was in prison, Imam when he would come out, he would tell the people in the crowd not to take my name, he will send a message to the Imam Hassan Askari that they, they have come to see me only. Mm. You know, one of the, there was a group of Zobar of companions wanted to visit the Imam, see the Imam, because Imam Hassan Askari was put in prison, in yeah. intense prison. And uh, he would go to report to the Khalifa of the time, uh, two times a week that he should be, yeah. it was house arrest. And then he would, uh, where people will gather to really give him visitation, to really give him salutations and salams. Imam would say that, you know, don't speak to me now because there are some spies. Mm. They will report you that you are our follower and you will be in trouble. Indeed. Imam would send letters hidden in the, uh, you know, in, in the wood, yeah. right? C hidden inside like the wood, stick. like bamboo stick, so that, mm. you know, through the people who will bring fire for the water, warm mm. water and all that to his house. Yeah. You know, in those sticks he would hide and send, and things have been reported, right? So Imam, they used these Ilmul Ghaib as the story that you have, or the narration that you are talking about, mm. exactly the same amount of dirham were given, the name mm. of the person, Amr, mm. you know, and then they went and they brought the mother of uh, Hujjat ibn al-Hasan al-Askari to the house and they were wedded. Mashallah. And the reports of the alayam, the signs mm. of her not being pregnant is also being reported. Yeah, and this point I think is very important because uh, uh, you could see that Al-Mu'tamid knew, they, because they are Bani Abbas, they are cousins to Bani 
Ali, if we can call them Alawi, they knew exactly that Al-Mahdi will come from him because we have had the stories. Our fathers have been telling us. So we need to make sure Al-Mahdi is not going to be born because if he is going to be born, Rasulullah has said, their justice will prevail. And they didn't want that. So according to the narrations, we can hear that, uh, or we hear and we read that uh, the mother was kept in one particular area and the father was kept in another area in order for them not to be together so that the, the imam wouldn't be born. So Imam al-Askir was, was kept in, in jail under house arrest for quite a long time until his death and the mother too. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, exactly now we are coming to this particular point that if Allah has already decreed, planned, something to happen there is no one who will stop the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. and the mother became pregnant Nargis yeah. became pregnant even the pregnancy wouldn't be shown yeah. so now here there's a point and that is the imtihan even for the Shias of the time some of them were confused because they say we see Imam Hassan in prison under house arrest the mother is not closer to him so we don't have a, a, a imam Imam would come and, and some of them after the death of Imam Askari alayhi salam they went for other people saying that these, these are the Mahdi. But we know clearly when Imam alayhi salam al-Askari alayhi salam was asked who will be the one who will be after you as Imam he said don't worry he will be born and when he was born he called few of his companions and he said this is the Al-Hujjah, Al-Qa'im, Al-Muntadari, the one who has been waiting, he waited, he is the one who will be the Imam. And they said, this, a baby? He said, yes, this one. Why? Because I'm the father and I know what I'm saying to you. So, alhamdulillah, there were people who followed Imam alayhi salam. And to me, when I look at the year 255, the year which Imam was born, 15th of Sha'aban, 15th of Sha'aban, Sha'aban, the month of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, kana yad'abu fi suyamihi wa qiyamihi, fi layalihi wa ayyamihi. Rasulullah used to fast a lot in this month. He used to recite a lot of dua. Rasulullah said, help me in my month. Allah has given him a gift that Imam Mahdi was born on the 15th of Sha'aban. And by itself, you see all Muslims around the world, 15 Shaban, even for many Sunnis, they celebrate it by different names. They call it, for example, Kisma to Rizq, the day when the Rizq will be divided and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decree for the whole year what will happen to you and me. For example, they call it Shabe Baraat <laughs> and many other names. It is a big day for Muslims around the world. Yeah. And it is this year 255 when i look at it whenever i recite ayatul kursi in surah al-baqarah ayah number 255 the year of imam's birth is 255 to, to me it's not a coincidence right. here there's a message uh, and this hidden mashallah. message is we need to be closer to the Asa. imam of our time well, I, I feel like uh, giving a nari haydri for Allah. you now you know it was a very powerful Allah. nari haydri point you made it here yeah, Ali. Yeah, Ali. yes the month of prophet and another you know the same name of the prophet is born and mm. uh, indeed it's really fascinating Alhamdulillah. and amazing really the month of shaban and the month of ramadan so the imam will take us towards the month inshallah Ilahi towards Ameen. that month indeed yes and uh, you know, as you were mentioning about the Imam and the birth of the Imam, uh, we find that the uh, Imam just before the birth, even those who were in the family, you know, members, mm -hmm. the, the aunt, for example, who mm -hmm. was there, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, just, uh, she played the a very similar Halim. role. Mm -hmm. Just like how Hazrat Zainab alayha, paid for Imam Hussein, salam, the aunt of uh, Imam Hassan, uh, Askari alayhi salam, uh, the aunt of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, mm -hmm. played a very similar role. Indeed. Like of Hazrat Zainab, that you know the alarm was not there, but the Imam said, "Go now. Mm. This is the time. Go this ahead. is the hour. Yes." Mm. But she says that I don't see any signs. I said, "No, 
the time have arrived. Subhanallah. The Imam indicated that. Really. Alhamdulillah. 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 So inshallah, what a blessed day, you know, Barakallah. what a day of celebration. Uh, you know, uh, any last dua that you want to give just before yeah, we, Allah. you know, inshallah. Bas, the dua which we all ask is uh, to, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us, inshallah, not only to, to know the, the haq, the, you know, this dua which is very powerful. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa ruzukna tiba'a. Wa arina al-batwila batwilan wa ruzukna jtinaba. Ya Allah, show us the right as it is. And allow us, make us be able to follow it. Sometimes just to, to know the right is easy, but to follow it is not. So now we know that Imam Mahdi is the right. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us be able to follow him, inshallah and to stay on his path. Thank Inshallah. you very much for the Shukran. lovely duas and thank you to all our viewers for joining us uh, to celebrate the birth of uh, the Savior, Imam Al-Asr uh, We uh, hope and pray that you have benefited from our discussion, Inshallah, and we hope to see you again in our future programs that is dedicated to the birth of Savior. Thank you very much for joining us. Ghafar Allahu lana wa lakum wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.